Hey guys, Dave Blair. Today we're going to be taking a look at cruiser positioning and strategy. There's different classes or types of cruisers. The subclass we're going to be looking at is kiting cruisers. Uh, typically these are going to be the French and Japanese, in my mind at least. Uh, we have Rue on the screen, or we did a moment ago. I tend to like Rue slash Makawa for these lines. The extra speed, the extra steering gears help with the dodge ability, and we're going to see that using our ship's movement is kind of one of the key strategies that we're going to be employing with these type of ships uh, to keep ourselves safe and sound. So the basic idea with these type of cruisers uh, in terms of strategy, in terms of positioning, is we're going to move into the enemy until we acquire targets that we can successfully shoot at. And then we're going to turn. Hopefully we've mostly or totally completed our turn before we're spotted and then we're going to sail away varying our speeds uh, depending on how hot the particular threats are to us but we're going to gradually to extremely fast sail away from the enemy uh, and then shoot while we're doing that uh, potentially kind of a subset strategy is if we keep an eye on our position on the map and we keep an eye on how eager these ships that we are engaging us want us dead, we can potentially draw those ships that are focused on us into irrelevant parts of the map. So kiting has kind of a part A and a part B definition. The strict, or the, the broadest definition is sailing away from an enemy while engaging them. That's kiting them. I kind of view it as like the string of a kite trailing. But the subset definition also will incorporate the idea of drawing them towards you and consequentially you can employ that to draw them to strategically less valuable places on the map. In a domination mode type game that would be away from the center of the board where the objectives are. You can try and draw the enemy to the edges of the map that they're going to have a hard time or a harder time affecting the outcome of the game. And here as we watch the opening salvos we'll again note we are in the process of turning Rue and Makawa, those type of commanders, will have the ingenious perk. Number one, that'll tell you if you're targeted. Very useful because we are kind of baiting the enemy into shooting us a lot of the time, so we do need to understand who's shooting at us. Number two, though, the ingenious increases the turret traverse on your ships, and when we're doing these kind of maneuvers where we're dodging a lot of shells, that'll help us keep the turrets on target keep the DPM going. Basically the idea of cruisers as a broad class is we want to position these ships and use them in a way where they can continuously fire the guns from you know 30 seconds into the match until the end of the match. If you can do that with these cruisers you're gonna get relatively low damage per salvo but due to the fact that we're pumping out salvo after salvo and we can damage these ships from any angle we should be accruing high damage per game, but again that takes the majority of the game. The downside of cruisers is they can be deleted very quickly. So you can see here we're currently utilizing cover to remain undetected. And as we're going to be kiting around and sailing around, you naturally need to be keeping an eye on when am I spotted, when does that spotted icon drop off. Whenever it drops off that means you're in a spot where you can temporarily stay there, fire under cover, and every shot that you can take while you're not detected is a free shot where you're guaranteed to not take return damage. So it's, you know, you'll be able to find those positions more and more as the map or the match goes on due to the fact that there's going to be less ships on the enemy team with uh, lines of sight towards you. But even early on, you can find them. Uh, it's, we're not going to be hugging islands or anything like that uh, throughout the match here. We're going to stay mobile. And you can see now how we're positioning. We're turning the rear of our ship towards the bulk of that fleet here. And then we're sailing. We're continuing to sail away. But the ships to the east on the map, they don't really have great options to fire at us. And by turning around here, we were able to get back under cover. And now we have good angling against the ships that are the main threat to us. So we can't be shy about turning which ship or which direction our ship is facing even if it takes a while for those front guns to turn around that's not the end of the world uh, it's safety first with these kiting cruisers we gotta be focusing on doing what we can to remain alive again because the damage that these ships provide to our team 
is achievable, but usually only over the course of a match. Now when we're talking strategy, of course, we're looking at the mini-map for the majority of the time, so if you've been doing that, you've been noticing that we've basically been pointing away from the enemy for almost the entire game, ever since that initial opening turn. And as long as they're pushing into us, you know, we can vary our speed. Currently we dropped it down to half, then we'll bump it up to full if we start getting spotted, maybe just to vary our speed a little bit. But we don't want to outpace these ships necessarily, especially if they're not targeting us and actively shooting at us. And then we can slow down, make sure we don't outpace them. But we'll just continue to fire at these. And now as we're approaching a section where we're going to have multiple ships that can potentially shoot at us at any point in time, we're going to continue to angle out, you know, kind of towards the middle of the pack there. But how you want to engage these ships is sequentially from the open side of the ship to the closed side. So you can see my broad side is how I would describe open to the left hand side of the screen to the west. So I basically engage those ships from west to east. And that'll allow me to maintain a very steep angle against these ships that can shoot at us, uh, protecting us. And then, you know, it'll keep us the steepest firing angle, I guess, against that whole pack just by taking them sequentially like that. So sometimes you're going to be forced to engage a different ship that's more in the middle of the pack. Either they're a major threat to a teammate or they're, you know, on a cap you need to reset or something like that. And that'll force you to kind of point broadside more towards the pack dangerous it is a calculated play that's an option in the playbook but if you're playing purely for safety's sake uh, again you want to engage them from your broadside first to the closed angle to the rear of the ship and uh, do them in a straight line in terms of target selection now we're getting to the first point in the game uh, where we were firing at them and pointing towards them this is usually how most cruiser players will play the entire game they'll sail into the ships and shoot at them but with these ships primarily we want to spend the entire game shooting at them while we're sailing away why we're all of a sudden changing this is because they're no longer pushing into us they're actually doing a pretty good job staying focused on the center of the map they're not falling for our kiting strategy getting sucked in uh, pushing into our spawn so they're actually responding to our strategy pretty well in this instance. But what we're doing now is we're just kind of repositioning ourselves so we can get enough, you know, they're deep enough into our firing range that once we turn around again, we'll have a little bit of room to continue to string them along here. And once again, we're getting into a situation where a lot of ships on the enemy team can all of a sudden engage us. We're going to change our angle here, kind of re-angle towards the center of the pack, and then again, primarily focus on going from broadside to close end. And that broadside ship first up is the Wichita. So that's why we're positioning how we're doing, and that's why we're engaging the enemies in the order that we're trying to do that. I want to keep getting those torps down on the battleship, of course, if possible, because he's a major problem down there. I want my team to quickly remove him. He is kind of, you know, a ship that is preventing me from angling against the entire enemy team, you know, in a tight ball. He's kind of the one crossfire threat, so I got to be very cognizant of him. His guns are much more dangerous than the Wichita's, uh, but the Wichita is kind of part of the pack, and I do want to angle towards them. So you can see if you're able to position yourself correctly using this method we've basically been in position to fire the guns on reload for almost the entire game and that's the goal with these. We want to kind of maintain our own focus on safety, keep ourselves alive throughout the entire match or as long as possible, but we also want to be useful and we want to be in position. So these cruisers, when we're positioning them around the map strategically, we need them to be in positions where they can target at least one ship reliably, possibly have, you know, two or three ships to choose from, uh, but they need to be able to fire on reload, basically, throughout the entire match. Um, and if you do that, then you're going to get a lot of damage. And because we're kind of focused on damage with these, the type of scoring that these kiting cruisers deal with the best is the team HP scoring aspect of the game. There's two scoring aspects. We talk about this a lot. There's the game score on top that's uh, affected by objectives and playing the game as it's designed to be played as well as killing ships that'll increase your team score. The other less obvious scoring method is just the peer. You take the entire team's 
total HP of all their ships, add them together. That's the team HP. When you whittle that down to zero, of course, you win that way. So these pure damage dealing, kiting type of cruisers usually have more impact on the team HP aspect of the game, but they can be important in domination mode games uh, and the team score aspect of the game as well. As long as you're keeping a very good eye on the map and seeing what needs to be done. Keep an eye on the objectives. Keep an eye on, you know, what part of the map needs support. Shoot the destroyers when they pop up. Those are critical pieces that are primarily the main scores of the team score aspect of the game. Uh, so you can definitely have an impact on both scoring methods, but the raw, you know, damage over time, that's kind of primarily you know useful in whittling the enemy team down and how we do that successfully is we focus on the disparity between your starting HP which is kind of your percentage of your team's HP you know and then the damage you do so if we do right now we got a 40,000 uh, HP ship roughly so if we do 80,000 which is basically where we're at now we've doubled our HP. So even if we die now, we've killed the equivalent of two of these pieces on the enemy team, and that's a pretty good result. You can get three times, four times, sometimes you'll see five or even, I don't know, six is pretty rare, but the more you can multiply your HP in these type of cruisers, and you know, in terms of your damage output, the more impact you're going to have on the game. So that's kind of the goal with these ones. Anyway, that's a look at the kiting cruisers for you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. A lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.